Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Building Better Apps with Thunkable workshop, where we will learn how to do more and build better with Thunkable. Our speaker for today's workshop is Dave Wolber, a professor of computer science from the University of San Francisco. Dave's an expert on visual programming and in using Thunkable in particular to make mobile apps. Uh, during the workshop, if you'd please submit all your questions in the chat box where we'll be monitoring them and then Dave can answer them. This workshop is scheduled to go for one hour. And now I'm very excited to pass it off to Dave Wolber. Hi, thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, let me just put uh, these slides full screen. So yeah, well, uh, I'm really happy to be here, everyone. Uh, my name is Dave Wolber, and I'm going to talk about Thunkable, how to build prototypes, full apps, things you could use for technovation or for entrepreneurship. And I put a little spreadsheet here because I'm going to focus on kind of apps with data, okay, and and dynamic data where the user can can post things and that kind of stuff because that's you know what a lot of apps that that folks want to want to build. Um, okay, so I'm from University of San Francisco. Um, it's a gorgeous campus, Golden Gate Bridge in the background, um, and it's a lovely place. And so this is a shameless plug. To, uh, I'd love to have. All, you know, any folks looking for a, either undergrad or grad school um, to USF. A couple of things about our department. Um, one, I run this thing called the De Democratized Computing Lab, and it's all about, you know, kind of getting, uh, you know, diversifying and, and kind of getting more people into computer science. Um, one nice thing about our department is we're about half, in terms of faculty, about half female faculty. Um, so it's a it's great learning community. Um, we have a women in tech group. This is kind of a small a picture of just a few of, of the women, including Be Besta Yuxel, who runs it. Um, but this women in tech group is like a huge part of our community. Um, I think the whole department, maybe a hundred, and and also the data uh, data science students and math students are also in it. But it's uh, you know not only women, but all the um, allies of, of of the women in our department. But there's social events. And we go to the Grace Hopper Conference every year, and we've got funding to send students to there. So anyway, USF's a great place. Um, okay, more about me. I, as Karen said, I'm I'm really into visual coding and beginner coding, and and what's now called kind of no code, but but tools to make it so citizen coders can build apps. So so in other words, you don't have to spend five years. Um, learning how to code before you can build something fun and cool and useful to the world, right? And I've written a couple books. Some of you maybe have used App Inventor 2 book or appinventor.org. I got a bunch of videos on that. Um, and then recently, you know, I've been working with Thunkable and I've got this book on drag and drop code. And then I've got a website with a bunch of video lessons there as well at dragonddropcode.com. Okay, so here's the plan for today. We're going to start with a map the summit app and we'll see how this goes um, but it'll also be a contest where hopefully we'll be able to see everybody on a map um you know the, the audience members uh, then i'm going to talk about thunkable a little bit and why i think it's a great tool um, and then the scary part for me is i'm going to do a live demo and build an app where users can post video and then see everybody else's video okay so we'll go through that and you'll get to see kind of thunkable in action um, I'll talk a little bit about creation and, and how it's often remixing things, and then we'll do a little a little Q and A. Okay, so I'm gonna um, kind of show my whole screen here, and the first thing we're gonna do, and sorry, that's not what I want to do. Um, what I want to do is presenter view. Okay. So what we're going to do is I've got this app, which is kind of a map app. So let me just open it up and, and let you see how it works. Um, so this is Thunkable. This is my map app. I can only run this app um, on a device, right? So Thunkable and App Inventor, uh, you can preview on screen, but for stuff like maps and phone stuff, you have to you know, run it on, a, on an actual, actual device. Okay, so anyway, what this app is pretty simple, and I've, I've got my uh, a tablet showing over here, but basically if I run this app, it takes a bunch of data from a spreadsheet and shows it on the map. And then if you touch, and I'm touching my um, iPad right now to do this, 
if you touch one of the things, it, it puts in the title um, of whatever the person input. Okay. So anyway, that's that's the app we're gonna use. And I'll show you a little bit of the code in, in a second. Um, but uh, what I want everybody to do, we'll just take a couple minutes to do this, but you're going to go to maps.com and don't go to your exact house, but go to your hometown or where you're at now, whatever you want to do and find the location. Okay. And I'll, I'll give you a little demo of that. So you're going to grab the latitude and longitude of, of where you are. And then I've got this public spreadsheet. And what I want you to do is put your information into that spreadsheet, including the lat, the long, and your name, okay? Um, so that's that's what we'll do. And, and the sheet is bit.ly techno sheet. Let me just kind of open that up. It's just a simple spreadsheet. Right now it's got my house in there with the lat long of that and USF. And what I want everybody to do is add their hometown information to, to this spreadsheet. Okay, so let me kind of get this smaller and bring up the uh, instructions again. Okay, so what you want to do is, if I just open a map, I'll kind of show you how to get your coordinates. But if you go to Google Maps, and on a Mac, if you control click, you can grab coordinates, okay? Um, on a Windows, I think you do a right click and you can grab coordinates. But if I click on these coordinates, I then, it puts it into my, um, you know, it's copied into the clipboard. And then I can come over to the spreadsheet and inside here, the lat, I can put the whole thing. Now I don't notice it's got both the lat and the long. So the latitude and the longitude, and you need both of those for, for a location. So what I really want to do is grab, um, welcome uh, folks, whoever just popped in there. And what I want to do is grab the longitude and stick it here and then back to the latitude make sure I've only got the latitude in this column. Right. So I want something like, like that. Okay. And then of course I'm going to put some information there. Okay. So yeah, feel, please feel free to add your own rows, um, stick okay. in your lat. Your, your, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Karen. Sorry. Just, can you um, put up that bitly again for the, um, uh, yeah, let me sheet. let me bring that. Yeah, let me bring that back up. So, yeah, the tech it's it's bit.ly slash techno sheet is the sheet to go in and put your information in. So if everybody can take a minute or two and try to put put their information in, um, we'll also have a contest a little later. Um, and I'll you know one thing I'll do is just you know once we get some some people uh, in there, we'll show the map. You can see everybody. Um, and where they're at. And also a little later, I'll do a little contest where I, uh, you know, we'll choose a random person and, and, and somebody can win a free, a free book. Okay. Um, so anyway, yeah, work on that a little bit. And Karen, if you can maybe stick that link into the chat. And then what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead as, as people are doing this, I'm going to go ahead and put in or go, you know, show you the Thunkable app just a little bit um, to see how that how the app works. Okay, and, and if you can try to try to do these rows uh, in contiguous manner. So don't like I see someone jump into nineteen. Maybe make sure you you know, bring that up a little a little higher. All right, thanks everybody. This looks cool. <laughs> I love I love I love uh, Google Sheets, right, or Google Docs. It's it's cool to see uh, people working on the same stuff. Okay, so let me bring up the app as as that's as that's going on. Um, let me just show the code for this map, and and it's pretty pretty fairly simple code. It's got a map component. Um, it's got a button where we're going to end up choosing a winner, right? And then it's got some blocks, and the blocks are you know the the complicated part about the blocks is we're using a you know we have to actually access a a Google Sheet. Right, so we have to go get all the data, the lat, the long, and the title, um, and then we kind of have to loop through those lists. And what we do is add a marker to the map every every time. Okay, so as this runs, you know it's gonna it's gonna go to our Google Sheet, and it's gonna add people in there. And, and you know the 
The other thing I do is like if you if we touch a marker, it shows the latitude and longitude of that uh, of that person. Actually, it shows the latitude and latitude right now. I should I should fix that. This should say longitude. I didn't even notice that. So anyway, that's that's the blocks, and I appreciate everybody putting putting their stuff in. Um, keep keep working on that, and and a little later, um, you know, we'll we'll take a look at that map and 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 see and see where everybody's at, and we'll and we'll also um, do a little a little contest. Okay, let me see where I'm at here. I don't need this Google Maps. Um, Uh, just just one one second, folks. Uh, let's see. Okay, I think. Sorry, I think I lost my. Um, uh, let me get my presentation back up. Uh, okay, so let's see if I go to Techtivation Summit. There we go. And um, present. Okay, so sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, okay, so we just did the map, the summit, and and we'll, like I said, we'll go back and and hopefully we'll see everybody on that map, and and you'll also be able to go to that app and and check it out yourself. Um, okay, so I want to talk about Thunkable. It's a visual blocks coding language, um, and you know it really you know kind of lives on the shoulders of some other MIT related you know or generated tools, Scratch, which a lot of people now use, especially youngsters, right? And then MIT App Inventor. And then Thunkable is actually two, two guys who were students at MIT and that worked on MIT as grad students. They started this company, this startup, and they've they've built built this wonderful, wonderful app. Okay. Or yeah, you know, this Thunkable tool. And it's a it's a great tool. A um, couple key key things. It's like plugging puzzle pieces together. Um, sorry, hold on one second. Karen, am I still live? Yep. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, okay. Okay, so it's like plugging puzzle pieces together. And the nice thing is you don't have to remember textual codes. And, and you know, I've taught a lot of students at USF and a lot of smart students come into computer science and they have to learn Python or even Java to start and they just get frustrated, right? Because it's just, you get these weird error messages and we lose a lot of great, interesting, smart people from the field because it's like, this is not what I want to do, right? So the blocks languages really kind of give a you know a much nicer you know kind of introduction, and the cool thing is you can build really interesting apps you know right away. Um, so the other you know nice thing about you know Thunkable and App Inventor you know the design, the UI design, and the interactive behavior is integrated. Okay, um, so you can kind of draw your how your screen's going to look and then start coding. It's a very high level library. And you know, one thing to, you know, which is really important is there's event handlers. And by event handler, I mean kind of a win block, right? When someone clicks a button, do this. Or when the app opens, do this. Or even, you know, with with Thunkable, you can do things like when one sprite collides with another one, you know, do something, right? And in in Python and Java, doing events is actually, you know, something that takes some sophisticated coding when when you you know really it should be something that's just immediate all right so anyway citizen coders can build apps really fast um, with visual with visual blocks languages okay what's special about thunkable you know one thing that you know that one big reason i kind of moved to thunkable was you can build stuff for iphones 
Android, and even web apps. So you kind of build it once and then you can run it on all those different platforms. And I used to teach with App Inventor, you know, they now have iPhone too, but you know, we would have to get Android devices for everybody as opposed to people being able to use their own phone um, to, to do the work. The other nice thing about Thunkable is it's got a really snazzy interface. Okay. Um, you know, so it's kind of, kind of slick. And then it's also got a lot of, you know, components and properties where you can make your interface look really cool. Now the stuff you're going to see for me is probably not going to be the most beautifully designed, designed app, but the tools are there to, to let you do that. Um, they're also working on some like Figma integration. So you can use some other tools where you can really build beautiful designs and then, and then import those into Thunkable. Um, you know, what I think is the key, you know, advantage of the Thunkable tool and where I think it's maybe one of the best citizen coding slash beginner slash no code tool is the spreadsheet integration. It really make it's the easiest way I think to, to make an app with a database. Okay. So, um, Anyway, I just want to show you a few things and and I'm going to show you my my site drag and drop code and just and look at a couple apps. And so let me let me open open that up. The drag and drop code has a bunch of tutorials and video lessons. And one nice thing about Thunkable is you can try apps out like unless you make an app private by default they're public and you know they have a nice little page where people can run and try these apps so if, if you want to try any of these apps on this front page you do have to get a thunkable account and you can get a free one okay but once you get that free account you can just click on one of these links and it will 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 allow you to actually use the app and look at the source code so it's very much open source um, so you can do like travel apps, um, you know, you can do an app where like the history app where you, in this case, it's an app where it, it does speeches from kind of civil rights leaders, right? Um, this was a four sounds app, a countdown app, a quiz app. Um, every time in my class for you teachers out there, you know, I, I do a, an app where we get everybody in the class to join. So it's kind of a meet your classmates app. And you can do some cool stuff with that. Um, but anyway, let me just show you one example. Um, this is a kind of a, a, a weird app where, you know, it, it uses image recognition. So you can take a picture. And once you take that picture, um, it, it tells you what, what the picture is of. So I'll, I'll do something weird, you know, something here. Let me grab my phone and see if it figures out that this is a phone. But I'm going to click on take picture. And the preview actually does a little camera for you. Um, it takes just a second. David H. Koch wearing glasses and looking at the camera. <laughs> now, that, that is not the description I would have hoped for. Um, I am not David H. Koch. I'm David Wolbert. Um, but anyway, that's the image recognition um, that this app does. And like I said, you can just click on edit project. Or I think if you don't own it, you click on you know look inside and you can get to the source code of, of, of that app. Okay, so anyway, that's that's one, one uh, thing you can get to from drag and drop code. But check out drag and drop code. You can get to the book, to, to buy the book, and then there's a bunch of video lessons, you know, to build games, build to meet my classmates. And in fact, the, you know, the video posting app that I'm gonna show you in a second here. Okay, so. Anyway, that's that is the um, drag and drop code, and I you know I encourage everybody to to check check that out. Okay, so what what do we use Thunkable and App Inventor and these kind of tools for? So you definitely you want to build complete apps, but there's also this concept of prototyping, and with Technovation. And with any kind of entrepreneurship, what you want to do is, is get an app that kind of works, that can show your idea, and it's tangible, right? People can actually kind of play with it, and you want to show that to funders or prospective users or buyers um, as early as possible. Get as much feedback as you can early. 
Um, MVP is a similar idea of a minimal minimum viable product. It's kind of like a prototype, but it's actually you could put it in front of real customers. You know, sometimes we say MVP is the first one that you can make money off. All right. Um, but anyway, that's that's what you can do with these tools. And like I said, as they progress and, and even now you can build complete apps that you put on the app stores. Um, but you can also build apps that kind of present your idea. So they're, they're really helpful in that way. Okay, so I'm going to go on, but in, in the chat, please post, you know, what languages you've, you've, you've used, um, what app uh, you have you built or would like to build, and any questions you have concerning Thunkable. Okay. All right, so... Um, what are we going to build? So a lot of apps you want to do with technovations or startups, you want the user to be able to log in. And then once you log in, you want to go ahead and you know be able to input data. Like in this sample and the one we're going to build, you can you can record a video with a little you know annotation to it and and post that. Okay. Um, but building, you know, building such apps with that kind of dynamic data is 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 pretty challenging, um, but our tools are now getting us to the point where beginners can can actually do it. I just taught a class with Thunkable last semester, and all my students were able to build kind of apps with dynamic data, and that was not true even a year or two ago um, with with the tools. Okay, so starting from zero, well, zero kind of. I'm going to demo an app that allows the user to post a video, stores the posts and videos in the cloud and allows all users to view the video posts. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna, gonna do. And um, uh, oh, sorry, so, so the first thing I wanted to say is we're not gonna do the login stuff for this app. We're gonna, you know, and, and Thunkable does provide a tool where you can use Firebase from Google and that handles a lot of the login stuff for you. And you can see this link you can get to as a tutorial just to do login stuff. So check check that out. And then you're you know you can also handle you know deal with spreadsheets to to put some of the user information in there. Okay, what we are going to look at today is Thunkable plus Google Sheets plus Cloudinary. So this is how we're going to do a video post. Um, Google Sheets is where we're going to store our database. Cloudinary is this great tool that's integrated with um, Thunkable. And what it does is you can put stuff in the cloud, right? So once we record a video, we send it to Cloudinary and they send back a URL. And that, that way we can store that URL. And then later we can play back the stuff. Because obviously if some person records a video and it's a file on their own phone, other people aren't going to be able to see it. So that's how, that's how it's going to, it's going to work. Okay, so I'm going to do my demo here. I'm actually going to start um, with a uh, with a, a little, slightly, a few things in the app, and and let me bring that up right now. Um, let's see. I'm just going to do Command Shift R on Thunkable to get this to come up. Oops, sorry, this is this is not. So let me go back to Thunkable and get to my starter app. Okay, so I'm just going to bring up this starter app and all it's got is some design stuff um, and it's got no code, but I did put in a few things just to make things a little bit quicker. So what I've done, and you know, this is the, the Thunkable designer and what I've done is I just added a label, you know, how will you change the world? Uh, this component is called a data viewer list. And you can, you know, you can, you can basically drag these components in from, from this panel over here. But this is a data viewer list over here. And then down here, I've got a video player. Okay. And this is going to be the main, uh, you know, the home page. And then I've got a record screen which there's a button to actually record some video. This will show the video while you're trying to record it. And then I've got the start of an input form and I'll show you kind of how to, how to, change, how to change that. Okay, so um, 
anyway, that's that's where we're going to start from here. And let me just pull this guy out. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the code for, for this app. Here's screen one. Here's the record screen. And the first thing I'm going to do is on screen one, we need a button to actually get to the record screen. And so um, I'm just going to come over here and grab a button component, drag it in. And what you want to do is, you know, you can set the text for this and I'll say record your video. And this is the new, a new user interface in Thunkable. It's called the drag and drop interface. And you can kind of just drag things, place it wherever you want. Um, it'll help you with centering and stuff. Um, and you can resize, you know, directly, which you couldn't do and you can't do in the classic um, Thunkable interface. So it's pretty cool. So look out, look out for that. Um, so anyway, that's my button. You also want to kind of name your components because when you get to the blocks, you want to want to be able to find that. So I'm going to call this the record button. And now I'm set up. OK, so anyway, all I want to happen on the record button is when record button dot click. And I want to just open the other screen. OK, so all we're doing is when the user wants to record, we're going to get them to our second screen. OK, and if I if I run that, um, not too interesting, but I can click on that thing and get me to the second screen. OK, um, as you notice, uh, Thunkable's got a great kind of previewer um, to, to preview stuff. OK, so now I'm going to go to the record screen. And what I want to do is code the behavior for it. And, you know, just to look at the design of it, you know, when I click this, I want to start recording the video. I'm going to end up playing it in this video player, and then the user is going to be able to input some information. Okay, so I'm going to go to the record screen, and um, on this thing, I've got a button called Record Now button, and I'm going to bring that on. So when that's clicked, what I want to do is go to the camera, and there's actually two blocks to do video stuff. I'm going to grab this last one because I'm not going to restrict the user. And I want to do a video file from a recording and using the back camera. OK, but when I do that, I need a place to put the result. And so Thunkable has variables so I can create a variable. I'm going to call this one video file. And I just want to put a blank text in there. And then in my code, I'm going to set that variable to whatever I get back from the video recording, okay? And then I'm also gonna stick it in as the video and voila, okay? So the, the idea is I'll be able to play my video. And in fact, if I preview this right now, if I click on record now, um, oh, it's recording me right now, okay? Uh, I click stop. And you'll notice it it just recorded what I was just doing and I can play it. Now, um, oh, it's recording me. Okay. So anyway, that's how you can record stuff and then play it back for the user. Of course, this is just playing back the current one. And I now I need to make it so we can store that in the cloud so other people can, can see it. So um, I'm going to close the preview, go back to my blocks. Um, one thing I wanted to show you, though, is you can actually do advanced, a little more advanced recording. Um, and this way you can deal with errors that might happen in case there was some error when we record the video. Um, so this block, you know, once it gets done, you'll want to do the stuff you're doing. And what I can do is set my video file to this parameter that comes back, which which has the file which just got recorded and I can stick it in there. And, you know, you know, Thunkable has, you know, if blocks. So I can say, you know what? You know, if if there was an error, I can do something special. And otherwise, I go ahead and, and proceed. Okay. And I actually have an error label block that I set up. And I can just stick whatever the error might be in there. Okay. So anyway, now 
uh, sorry, I think I lost my air. There we go. So anyway, now we can let the user record something. And now we need to let them post something. Okay, and there's a couple things we need to do. We need to have both a spreadsheet that we're gonna that we're gonna use, and we need to um, use Cloudinary. Okay, so first thing I want to do is just briefly, you know, look at Cloudinary, and this is a, a a a tool that you can get a free account with. And I'll just log into my account, um, but essentially it gives you a place to put files and get URLs back for them. And I can go to my media library, but I also have this these, these settings, which I use, and I actually need to stick those into my Thunkable account. And then I can use this kind of file to URL mapping tool, and it's free. I can put a gigabyte of stuff here for free, okay? Um, so uh, when I record, and I just wanted to show you, you know, if I go to my designer, and I go down to Cloudinary uh, or to my settings. And in my settings, there, whoops, sorry. In my settings, if I go down near the bottom, and I'm not going to go all the way because I don't want to, I don't want you to see my secret setting. <laughs> okay. But if I go down to the bottom, here's my Cloudinary stuff. And you essentially need to take from your Cloudinary page and input this data so that your app will, will be able to stick things into Cloudinary. Okay, so you gotta set those settings. Um, all right, so back to our blocks. Once we've set those settings, it's kind of nice. Um, and now, um, notice I've got two buttons on this second screen. The submit button is when we're done. Um, I did also wanted to show you adding a text input box. So let me add the second text input box. Okay, and I'm going to rename that guy name text input. Okay, and so now I've got this other block, and I'm also going to set some hints for these guys. So, like this one is like the hint should be like enter the title, and this one's going to be enter your name. Oops, sorry. And Karen, if you can just check in and let me know uh, that you're there and, and also if there's any questions. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm got... here and we're everything's good. Okay, good. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. No questions. Um, all right. So I've got this entry form and my goal is once they record something, they put some information here, they click submit, and we're going to post that to our to our spreadsheet. Okay. Um, and that's what that's what we're going to do. Now, in my app, um, there's this little icon for the data, and I don't have any data sources here. So I need to tell it which, which spreadsheet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my drive again. And I've got a spreadsheet set up um, for, for this thing. And uh, let's see, I think it's... Well, actually, sorry, I'm just going to create a new spreadsheet. Okay, so one nice thing about Thunkable is you can just, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to call this tech, techno V, techno bids. Okay, but Thunkable lets you, you know, just connect to a spreadsheet pretty easily. And what I'm going to put here is video, title, and author. Okay, and we're going to end up posting things. In there, we're going to fill up these rows from our app. Okay, so I've got my spreadsheet called Techno V, and let me just kind of move him over. Okay, and now over in my code, I've got to add a data source. And the way you do it is you click on that plus sign, go all the way down, create new. You can do Airtable or Google Sheets. Or you know, uh, Thunkable has their own sheets in there too, um, but I'm going to choose my Techno V sheet I just created, and yeah, the first row is the column headers, right? And I'm going to create that data source. Okay, so now I've got a sheet that I can actually use. It's in my app, and now I go back to my blocks, 
And when someone says, okay, I want to submit something. Okay. When I, when they submit something, essentially what I want to do is stick it into, um, into Cloudinary. And there's this block called URL from, it says uploaded file, but we're, we're going to actually just stick the file we already recorded. Um, and I'm going to create another variable and I'm going to call that guy video URL, right? Cause we're basically trying to take a file that got generated and turn it into a cloud URL. And then I'm just going to set my URL. Now I could just stick this block in, but what really what I'm going to do is like I did before, I'm going to show the advanced block and it looks a little bit different, but I'm going to upload an image and the image I want to upload is the thing I stuck into my variable called video file, right? So I'm going to go grab a reference to that video file and I'm going to upload an image. And then when it comes back, so I upload an image to Cloudinary, it's going to come back and give me a URL. And what I want to do is stick that URL in. Okay. And that'll be in my video URL button. Okay. Of course, really what I want to do is stick it in my spreadsheet. And so the way I do that is I come down here, data sources, create a row. Okay. Right. So data sources, I can create a row in my spreadsheet. And of course I just need to fill in the three, the three columns, right? My video value is going to be this URL. And then I want to stick, um, you know, whatever the user's input for the title. And then whatever they've input for the, um, for their name, that'll be the author, right? Okay. So if we run this right now and, you know, we should probably check to make sure the users put something in here. So we should probably probably have an if statement here to make sure um, and make you know we should probably not even allow them to click on the submit button until we know they've recorded a video. Um, but let's just you know we'll leave that for later. And what we want to do is create this row, and then you know we're going to go back to the screen one once we get done with that. Okay, so I'm just going to test this now. This record screen. And when I click this button, okay, here's my video. Hey, what's up? I click stop. It's recorded my video, but I haven't posted it yet. And so I'm going to say the title of this is what's up video. And then my name's Dave. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to click submit. And what we hope for if things are working is when I click submit, my spreadsheet's going to have some data that shows up and, and you'll notice it did, right? So my app just stuck something in the spreadsheet and you'll notice including this, it's got a URL from Cloudinary, right? Cause we, we actually sent our file up to Cloudinary and then it's got the title and author I put in. Okay. Now we're back at the main screen. It's not showing anything. So we're not quite there. So let me, let me show you how that should work. Um, so I'm going to close the preview, go to screen one. And, you know, screen one on the design, I've got this thing called a data viewer list. And really it's a spreadsheet viewer. And it can show you whatever data you want from a spreadsheet. And what I got to do is say, oh, you know what? The data source I care about is the spreadsheet called TechnoV. I want to show a title and a subtitle. Oops, I don't want that one. I don't have a picture to show. Um, I want this one. Okay. And then I just need to tell it which columns. So in the title, I'm going to put my title column and then I'm going to show my author column. Okay. So, you know, the goal is I'm going to end up with a bunch of rows here and I want to list them all up in my data viewer. And I can test that. I click on preview and notice it's now showing, you know, my data from the spreadsheet. It's not showing the video yet, but it's showing my data. All right. Finally, I actually want to show a video, but I'm going to make the user click on something first. And so in my blocks, I'm going to bring up the um, record button. 
Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm going to bring up data viewer list and there's this item click event. So when my user clicks on one of the items that gets listed, I actually want to play my video. Okay. So that's cool. I'm going to go to video. I'm going to um, set video play to true. And, but really what I need to do is I need to set the video. This, this property should be called URL or something, but anyway, the video's video is going to get set to something. And what I need to do now is they've just clicked on some item from my spreadsheet and I just need to go and actually get the value that they clicked on. Um, and I can use this row ID to, to, to do it. And I can just bring this guy down and say, okay, that's, that's the ID I want. And from techno V go grab that thing and grab the video column from that sheet. And then that should, that should play my video. Um, and you know, in this case, I'm only going to have one item, but it should at least play my video. So let's think, let's see if my test works. Okay. I've got the one thing when I click on it. Hey, what's up? <laughs> there it's playing my my wonderful what what up video right um so uh anyway that's that's kind of um a real brief look at a video recording app and just you know a couple things one you know we should um make it so when the screen one opens up it plays one of the videos we could randomly play a video um and like i said on the record screen you know, really, you know, we need to do some work to make sure the users entered a title and a name. Um, you'll do some kind of error handling there. Um, and we probably want to put a timer in. So like when you click record now, it goes five, four, three, two, one, that, that sort of thing. Um, you know, so there's a bunch of tweaks we could do, but at least what we have right now is this, um, you know, app that kind of gets us you know, part way, at least part way there, and you could actually use it and, you know, let your friends use it to, to add videos to, to whatever, whatever kind of app you wanted to, wanted to build. Okay. I'm going to um, come back and. we got a couple of questions, Dave. Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay, sure. So uh, the first one was uh, someone asked kind of generally, can you create an APK or standalone app with Thunkable? Yeah, good. That's a great, that's a great question. And, you know, you absolutely can. So what I was doing when I showed the map app, I was, I was live testing on device and there's something called Thunkable Live where you can test on your app. So that's not really getting, you know, getting the app that, that really gets built. Right. But you can download and publish. You can download an iOS app or Android app. And what that gives you is kind of, the actual app that can be installed ios is 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 pretty restrictive you can each person in the world can i think only download one such kind of app to their phone or device at a time all right so you you know if you want to distribute it to the world with ios you've got to actually go through the app store okay but you can distribute a few of them to your friends and then they can install one of them android's much freer uh, one great thing about Thunkable is you can also do web web app stuff. Um, and then, you know, these kind of links help you publish things all the way. So, you know, as you're building, you kind of use the live tester or the preview. And then uh, that's a great question. You can also actually get an installed installed app. Yeah, thanks. How, how about another question? And then another question is, can you link cloud in there? Oh, sorry. I, that's a different question. Uh, how do you link cloud Nary to your Thunkable? Yeah, good. So it's pretty it's pretty simple um, with the with this, you know, and one thing just to reiterate, I'm using the Thunkable's kind of got it's almost like two different tools, the classic one and now this thing they call the drag and drop uh, version. But in the drag and drop version, you just come over to settings and you just have to go down and at the bottom there's cloudinary settings. There's three of them. And you've got to paste those in from your Cloudinary site account into your Thunkable app. And you've got to do it for each Thunkable app that you build and that you want to use Cloudinary. 
And once you do that, you know, then this block, um, let's see, upload image works. It, and if you don't, you'll get an error and, and it'll, you know, basically it'll say, oh, I don't know where to put, put this stuff. And there's a specific component for cloud and every, right? That they first have Good. to Well, yeah, that's, that's in the, in the new drag and drop interface, the one I'm showing you today. Yeah. It's not even a component. It's just a function oh. block. Oh, okay. So okay. Sort of in fact, the way the new Thunkable th site works, which is actually, I think, the way it should be, is you don't bring in non-visible components. Um, they just have functions um, that you can grab and use. So you don't have to actually bring in the component. But if you're using the classic interface, there's that, so there's something called MediaDB, and that's the component that talks to Cloudinary. Um, so I know that's a little confusing, but you know, just you, you know, you know, right when you create a new project, and just let me bring that up real, real quickly. When you create a project, it asks you, do you want to use the new and the old? And if you're just starting out, you know, I I encourage you to click, you know, check this try it out box and just and just work with the new so-called drag and drop interface. Um, but if that's not checked, it'll bring up the classic one. Man, there's no way to go back and forth once you've started. Um, so be be careful with that. Yeah, how about another question, Karen? Um, I think that's it. That I can okay, see cool. Right now. Okay, good. Let me go back to my slides then. And I don't need that spreadsheet. And so we just did this demo. And, and if you want to take this link down, this link is actually to a tutorial that doesn't go through building the whole thing. It's a tutorial that gives you the app and one that's a little more done than the one I just showed you. And then you just have to tweak a few things in order to get it to work for you. Because obviously you have to use your Cloudinary settings and you have to make your own spreadsheet, right? But you can actually create a video posting app using you know, my um, template you know, very, very quickly. Um, customizations, I think I already mentioned these guys. And, you know, just, but think about, <laughs> you know, remixing, you know, how how might you re remix it? So you might do one, even for your family, right? Where your family can post a video about what they want for, you know, to do on Thanksgiving, right? Or, you know, you might do something where your friends can post things about, what they might do um, to help with climate change, you know, making a pledge. <coughs> um, you know, and one thing to think about, and, you know, I think Technovation, at least in the past, maybe you had to start from scratch. And I think that's going to be different in the future. I'm not sure about that. But, you know, is it okay to start with an existing app? And, you know, my answer is, you know, most creation with software and otherwise, it's usually a remix, okay? And you usually start with a you know a piece of code and then work work from there. And so the tutorial I mentioned for the video posting app, that's exactly what you'll do. And but what you want to do is when you present your project or whatnot, you just need to give credit to whatever code that you brought in and remixed. Okay. And you want to be very careful about that, obviously, um, because you know, if you're doing a contest, you can get in trouble or whatnot. But just ethically. Oh yeah, I use this open source software. I changed it, but you need to link to that project so people people know. All right, so the mo <laughs> the moment we've all been waiting for, and let let me see if I can pull this off. So I just want to bring up our map app, and let me see if I can look at the Google Sheet, and I just want to make sure. I think there's a row here I'm going to get rid of. So let's delete that row. I don't know how good my code is if it's going to handle like these empty rows and thank you everyone for putting your stuff in and there we go okay so i think this 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 will work so there's our map and i'm just going to open the app okay and i'm going to bring up my screen And here it is. And nobody, 
look at my password here. Actually, I'll change it later. But OK, so here's the app. And I think, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to close Thunkable and reopen it. And it's a weird little glitch. Sometimes when you're using Thunkable and you make a change in your app or your spreadsheet, you need to kind of re um, bring up your your tool. So here's the app, and I think, hey, Aaron, uh, hello, Aaron, good, <laughs> love it. Um, let me see if I can see some other people. Um, we've got somebody in the Walnut Creek area, Mark's work. Hey, Mark, and uh, we got people from all over, not just the United States. Oh, wow, this is really cool. Um, here's someone, let's see, you know, from Georgia, hello, and some people up in the UK, some Spain, Madrid, Spain. Okay, Kareem, hello, from the KSA. Um, cool. So anyway, our map app, it, you know, it, you know, you can you can grab the link for that and and you can use that in in some different settings, but it's a really cool way to I think bring people in. And you could also make the app where users could come to the app and it can find your location automatically and, and stick it on the map. So you could you could actually make a screen which which allows people to input it that way. All right. So here's the contest that and uh so whoever uh this random person that gets chosen um, you know, I'm Wolver D at Gmail or in the chat, you know, please put in, you know, your, your, you know, some way I can connect you and, and, and get you the, the, the book, uh, prize. So I'm going to touch, choose random here. Okay. And Brooklyn Botanic Garden, <laughs> uh, is the winner. Uh, so Brooklyn Botanic Garden, uh, let me know and, and somehow we'll connect to, to get you the, the wonderful prize of a of a technovation drag and drop code book okay so you know one thing you can use that app for is is mapping but also raffles are a fun fun thing to build okay and if you want to you know actually use the video posting app we just did and put a video on there um this is the link to get to it and um we may break it okay i don't know you know like for instance I've got that one gig Cloudinary um, account, but I, yeah, I think we should be okay. Or maybe there's another bug. But anyway, please put your videos up, and I'd love to see love to see you. Even just come to say hello, um, or if you want to talk about an app you might want to build um, to change. But use the web preview version. So one thing I didn't mention is, at least right now, you know that web preview version, and if we, you run it on your phone. Uh, the the UI doesn't look correct. Okay, it should make it so if you're a designer, it should look correct in both of them. But I'm not sure that's true. And the other thing is, if you use your phone, it's going to make much build bigger files. Um, so so use the web preview version of this app to to add your video. Okay. Anyway, maybe you got a couple minutes for questions. We already answered some questions. Um, but go ahead and, and throw questions in chat. Um, and, you know, like I said, um, please contact me. You can get me Wolberd at Twitter, um, Wolberd at Gmail. Um, I, I'd love to hear from, from folks um, if you've got some, some questions. Aaron, okay, we've, we've, got a, we've got a question here. Are there any thinkable features that you think are underrated and people should try out more? Good question. Yeah, it's a great, a great question. Well, I mean, I, the things I think are really cool are the maps component. Um, app, I think App Inventor right now has a few more features on their maps component. So that's that's mm -hmm. kind of cool. Um, but Thunkable's map component is good and will get better. Um, <clears throat> I think the spreadsheet stuff is phenomenal and it's going to get better and make it more powerful where you can do any kind of database database stuff. I like the image recognition, like that one little app I showed, and you can do things like scavenger hunts with that, right? Where you where you take text from from images and and do 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 that kind of stuff. But the thing that excites me the most is, you know, my students always want to build apps where users post data, and in the past that's been too hard. I mean, not too hard, but maybe only a few of the beginning students would make it there in a semester. 
And now I think you can start doing that within weeks um, of starting to play around with the with the tool. So that's that's what I would say is probably the the most underrated uh, feature of of Thunkable. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Just knowing both tools, uh, the the data, cloud data uh, features of Thunkable are amazing. And yeah, and I think App Inventor is uh, you know really good there too. And and, and I think both the tools are gonna gonna get there in terms of of, of data. Yeah, Thunkable is just so easy to use though. You just link it up and boom, it's very great. Uh, yeah. Here's another question. So we've just got a couple more minutes, but has Thunkable been updated? Uh, I know that with the Thunkable apps, you can't upload your app to the Play Store because it only has an API of 29. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I, I, I'm not, I'm not familiar with the most recent. If there's some issues with going to the App Store, the Play Store. Um, there is on, on, if you go into Thunkable and go to the community site and maybe it sounds like the person that asked this question is, is probably familiar with that, but on the community site, you can learn where things are at as far as getting things to the play store. Um, I know it, it, even to go to the iOS, you know, store can be, can be pretty challenging to get Apple to okay a, an app that, that you put in. Um, but yeah, so yeah, if anybody wants to add any links or what, you know, to chat, they can better, be, better answer that question. Um, that would be great. And, and, um, I'll, I'll, I'd like to learn about that too. Um, so I'll, I'll try to find out more, more about that one. Great. Okay. So is that all the questions, Karen? I think it is. So I think we'll wrap it up. Um, so thank you very much, Dave. Um, and if you're interested in learning more, uh, his website is dragondropcode.com. And then as, as Dave said, he'll look up that answer. And if there's any other questions people have, we'll continue to monitor the chat and answer those questions for you.